Okay, we're in unit number five, and we just talked about work. We know that work, there's three requirements for work. you got to have a force, you got to have motion, and the force and motion have to be um, parallel to one another. And we worked through some examples with that in the previous video. Uh, now we're going to introduce to you the equation for work. But before we do that, I need to give you a little bit of a commercial. Um, and we need to talk about um, how to multiply vectors together. One specific way is called the dot product. So we're going to do that first, and then um, and then I'll give you the equation for work. So here it is: multiplying vectors. Two or more vectors may be multiplied. Uh, two or more vectors may be added or subtracted. And we've uh, we've added and subtracted those before. We've we've done that. Uh, matter of fact, we did that in Unit 3, page 5. Uh, not only can vectors be added and subtracted, but vectors can also be multiplied. And we're going to multiply vectors in this chapter. So vectors can be multiplied in two different ways. One way is called a dot product. The other way is called a cross product. Okay, cross products will be discussed and used in Unit 8 when we study uh, torque. And so we'll get there eventually. This chapter we're going to use dot product to study work. So before I tell you what work is in terms of definition, or in terms of an equation, I need to tell you what a dot product is. Dot product is also known as a scalar property. Remember that because we're going to use that in just a moment. A scalar or dot product results in a there it is scalar answer. So the, when you multiply two vectors together with a dot product, you get a scalar answer. Hence, no direction. Hence, a scalar product. So we call it a scalar product. A dot product is written as a dot b, and we usually put the arrows on top, and is defined as a b cosine theta. All right, let's talk just a little bit about that. So down below here, I have a dot b. So that's vector a times vector b. When you multiply vector A and vector B together, you get another way of representing that. You can represent or you get A, B, cosine theta. Now, big, big difference here. In this case, A and B were both vectors. They've got to have direction. In this case, A and B are just the magnitudes of those vectors. So it's just a scalar part of it. So A is a scalar, B is a scalar, and then cosine theta. So A dot B is the same thing as AB cosine theta. If you don't get it yet, give me a few minutes and I think you'll get it. Essentially a dot product is a product between the components of two vectors that lie in the same direction. Alright, so now let me give you work and I think once we work through the definition and the equation for work this will make more sense. All right, so work is a, you know, what is it? Work is a, work is a transfer of energy. Um, when you think of work, think of energy in motion. Energy going from this to that. Energy going from this form to that form. Uh, energy in transit is work. So it, it's a transfer of energy from one object to another object. That's one way you could think of it. Work is an example of a dot product. That's what we said earlier. Because force and displacement are both vectors. The work is found by multiplying the components of the force and displacement that are in the same direction. And the answer yields a scalar. All right, so equation. So work is going to be force times displacement. That's your definition for work. But if we go back a page, we just said that if you take a dot b, that's the same thing as a b cosine theta. Let's use that idea. So if I go over here, work then is going to be f d without the arrows cosine theta. So both of those are equations for work. 
All right, so you know what force is. You know what d is. What's the what's theta? Well, theta is the angle between the force and the displacement. So um, let's go through the units real quick. We didn't do that. So let's do uh, let's do it right up here. So F D cosine theta. Force is measured in newtons. D is measured in meters. Cosine theta is uh, remember cosine, sine, tangent. Those are all ratios, so they don't really have units. So work we measure in newton meters. But we get sick and tired of saying newton meter, newton meter, newton meter, newton meter, newton meter. We need to give it a name. And so we're going to call, or a nickname, we're going to call a newton meter a joule. So work is measured in joules or newton meters. It's also measured in, this is important, a newton is a kilogram meter per second squared times this meter. So if we put all that together, we get, we get a kilogram meter squared over second squared. And that is a newton as well. I'm sorry, that is a unit, unit of work as well. I'm getting tired. So work is measured in newton meters, joules, and a kilogram meter squared over second squared. So let's see if we can get all those down in the next bullet point. Record work on your dimension unit sheet. Include the most common unit, which is going to be joules. Secondary and equivalent units. So here's the secondary unit. We can say newton meter. We could also say kilogram meter squared over second squared. We could also say erg. All right. Now that's kind of a weird one. Uh, it's an older one. We won't use it that often, if ever. I just want to throw it out there. You don't have to worry about this. And then the governing equation is going to be work is equal to F dot D. And that's this video. Next video, we'll do example number two.